It's time! The DDP, the Devlin Dual Podcast. My name is Martin Devlin. I work for the platform out of New Zealand with me. International cricket commentator, man of leisure and pleasure, who pursues a job he never calls a job because it's too good to be a job all over the world, calling his beloved game Simon Dual. 98 test wickets for NZ. So much to talk about today. Trent Bolt, of course, deciding that he will no longer be part of the Black Cap setup and he is going to be playing international T20 all around the world. But it's not entirely what you think. More details with Simon coming shortly. The White Ferns win bronze at the Commonwealth Games. Hey, I celebrate. I applaud this. Simon's thoughts on that. 100 cricket, which he's calling at the moment in England. Sophie Devine and some comments that Sophie made post winning the bronze. We will tackle those as well. I just saw really mature professional comments from Sophie. And we'll finish with the All Blacks. Mm. Yeah, I know. I know. Don't feel like that. Don't feel like that. We've got to go in with a positive mental attitude against South Africa. You are back in England now, Dooley. Thanks again for joining us. You're doing the 100, and I know it's a really hectic, hectic schedule. Yeah, it is a game every night. Um, early parts have been pretty comfortable, though, Marty, because it's just been the men's games while the um, Commonwealth Games have been on for the women. So the women's stuff kicks off uh, uh, not tomorrow, the day after, and then we're kind of into double headers, so back-to-back games um, starting at either 11 in the morning and 4 in the afternoon or 2 in the afternoon and 6.37 in the evening so um the, it, it's one of the great things about the 100 actually that the the men and the women play as sort of as a franchise together alongside each other and what we heard from a lot of the the guys and the girls last year was that they they were just one franchise it wasn't about having a men's team and a women's team they were just run, one franchise playing two games a day so looking forward to that and the good thing about it also and i know we've talked a little bit about the women's game uh, in, in previous episodes, but um, they're actually allowing, and I say this, it's a terrible thing to say, but what they are doing is putting the girls' games, uh, I think they get at least one, if not two, of the night games. So they play the men's games first and then the women's games afterwards, okay. um, oh, which brilliant. is going to be uh, e- even bigger. So they get games under the lights now, which is which is also fantastic for their development. And what kind of crowds are you getting? And also, do they know what kind of numbers are they getting on telly? Yeah, television numbers have been a little bit down from last year, but I think, you know, if you look at COVID, um, you look at the way the weather's been, and, and it has been exceptional. Another 29, 30 degree day today. Wow. Um, it's been 30 for the last two, two, three days, and it's meant to be again for the next three or four days, 30 degrees at least in and around London. So look, it's, it's school holidays. Everyone's away on holidays. So the, the television viewing hasn't been as good as it was last year, but the numbers at the ground have still been exceptional. We had um, almost a full house at Headingley the other night. Birmingham was fairly full today. We had 12,500 in a, in a 15 capacity stadium in Cardiff the other day. Well, last year we were only getting four down there because of COVID restrictions. So most of the crowds have been, uh, I, I wouldn't say absolutely sold out, but nothing has been under 75, 80% capacity. So it's been really good. Okay, so Simon Dool with us, the DDP. What obviously intrigues me the most is the future of this game, the, you know, the 100, which is 100 balls, it's just absolute quick smack, bang, flash. Uh, and, and, and then T20, which is obviously massively established, leagues all over the world. Dooley, mm. outside of the One Day World Cup, you know where I'm going with this. Is this going to be the death knell to One Day Cricket? Because, you know, we, when I think about I, I, we're talking about this yesterday, mate. I can't even remember who New Zealand played at home last summer in a one day. I can't remember, yet I can remember every player in the, in the underarm incident game. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I know what you're saying. Look, it, it's probably the one format of the game that is under threat. Now, I still believe that if you ask, probably, if you ask all of the players around the world, what is the most prestigious World Cup to win? I believe that 90% of them would probably say the 50 over World Cup still. Whether that's the same in 10 years' time, I, I don't know. But I still think because of its longevity, the amount of time it's been around, I believe that they would still say the 50 over World Cup is the one they want to win. The T20 will come and go a little bit. Um, and, and, you know, you've got to have a little element of luck at times to win that T20 World Cup. Remember, Australia didn't lose a toss through that tournament. That's right. Due, sort of did, did play a little bit of a part there. So I, I, I sort of, I think along those lines, um, look, I don't, I, and I've said this to you before, that I'm, I'm not a massive fan of bilateral T20 tournaments. I think T20 
and and even you know think about the hundred now should only be played at the franchise level, and then we should get together as New Zealand for a World Cup. Yeah. Because our players are flying their trade all around the world in other formats of the game. Now maybe that might be a bit far fetched because New Zealand cricket it's probably their biggest revenue stream is you know outside of an Indian Indian tours the biggest audience that walks through the gate uh, is T Twenty cricket. So maybe that's you know that maybe I'm thinking sort of pie in the sky stuff when I say that and. And I would like to see international 50 over cricket, international test cricket, and just franchise T20 cricket only. But, you know, whether that happens or not, I, I, I don't think it will. That's just my sort of pie-in-the-sky view of it. No, you've been pushing that barrow for a while, mate. And I say that with all the respect and genuine love. You know that. And, and I totally and utterly agree with you. We're going to talk about Trent Bolt in just a second. And this... Quite surprising news yesterday that he's decided that he wants out of the black caps and he wants to concentrate on just doing the T20s around the world while his body is still fit and strong and he's got three little boys at home with Gert. But I just want to play you a quote from Sophie Devine because I, I don't know about you, Simon, but I, I was wrapped that, that our women won that medal and I know that people are saying hey it's not gold or silver but the fact is is that they got absolutely walloped by England they they played well against Australia and just came up short but they reversed it against England now this is and and we spoke with Sophie Devine a couple of days ago and this is this is what part of what she said to us in fairness we want to be critiqued you know we when we play for shocker we, we want to know about it certainly we know about it ourselves but I think that's when we know that we've I guess really made strides is that we're getting the same level as cri- of criticism as the, as the men are um, because at the end of the day we're doing the same thing we're, we're playing a game of cricket and whether we do well or whether we we don't do well I think it's fair that our performances are, are scrutinised because you know that's the professional game that's what we do for a job and that's what we're judged on. She also made mention of you specifically and said that she really appreciates your support and I know that you've you know you've been a critic when they haven't played well but I thought that was just a really a really cool thing to hear from Sophie. Yeah, and, and more respect for her from, from listening to that too, Marty, from my point of view, because, look, I haven't always been kind to Sophie and, and, and to Susie, and, and it doesn't come from a place of, of anything other than I know they are better than what they've shown. And, and I've seen that they are better than what they've shown, but when it came to performances against the top-tier nations in crucial games, in crucial tournaments, they were found wanting. And so her innings in that semi-final and, and the demolishment of England uh, so in that um, third and fourth playoff, I thought was exceptional. And, you know, some people might say, well, it's not silver, it's not bronze. I mean, please, it, we, we're, we're probably fifth in the world. So it's actually a good achievement to, as to where we've come from in the last six, seven, eight years. So um, I, I was really wrapped that they absolutely demolished England. It's a tough game to play to that, that one, Marty. And, and you know, it, it would have meant an awful amount to to those girls as well to to get that bronze medal and um you know there were some nice scenes after the game mm. as well with with some celebrations with um with, uh, with Leah Tahuhu and and, uh, and, and her daughter yep. um running around on the ground and, and you know just things like that there were some nice scenes and some nice celebrations and look they feel it they've been through some pretty average times as a team they've felt the pain they've felt the criticism and and I, I, I you know look I've got an enormous amount of respect for Sophie and and um and, and having heard her say that, probably even more respect now because I don't look at her as a female cricketer. I look at her as a cricketer. And my job is to, is to critique and commentate on cricket. And, and I call the game as I see it. And, and I would call Martin Guptill the same way. I would call, you know, Kane Williamson, which I've had no problem doing the same way. I, I don't differentiate when I call. And sometimes that might seem harsh, but it, it's just me. And I think that's... No, they respect that, Dolly. This is the whole thing. Kind of got the respect. Yes, you hear that. Look, they they know. Look, and, and look, and I know that you know I've been you know accused of all kinds of things, but I don't kind of pull my punches when I'm critical, and I've been very critical of the this current All Black side, and we'll get onto that in a second, and the, mm. the you know the Joe Big test. But look, I'm just looking at it from a fan going, hey. This is what I'm seeing. Um, you know, you're, you're you're in a game which is based on performance and based on results and based on winning. I'm in that same game, Simon. You've been broadcasting a long time. You know the same. That's if you're not performing and, and the audience doesn't like you and you're not coming to work, doing your research, doing your job, well, mate, you're going to get found out and you're going to get paid out. And that's all it is. You know, yeah. people have got, you know, in New Zealand, I think sometimes with a lot of our athletes, and I was looking at some comments from Richie Mwanga the other day, which I just thought were just quite sort of prissy about. He doesn't want to listen to any fans, doesn't really care, he said, about the outside noise. And I thought, well, maybe that's your problem here, mate, because you're in a bubble where everyone's blowing yeah. smoke up your backside. And the truth is, you aren't that good at the moment. Hey, it's not, I'm not personally hacking you. I'm just telling you that this is your performance and that's yes. what we care about. 
Yeah, exactly. And, you know, we all care. We all care. And, and as, a, as a broadcaster, we, the last thing I want to do is, is go on television or even on radio and say something that a person at home, a, a man or a woman sitting at home says, well, that's just rubbish. I mean, he, how can he say that? Why is he not being honest? My, my job is to have an opinion. I get paid for my opinion. Yeah, same. And that's all it is. That's all it is. It, it is just an opinion. And as long as it's got some substance to it, and, and if it doesn't have substance to it, then you probably shouldn't be making it. So as long as it's got some substance to it and you can back it up with relevant facts and, and, and it is just your opinion, then that, that's all that really matters. I'm not paying people to agree with me. I'm not asking people to agree with me. I'd rather you sat at home and had a debate about it because then we're all, yeah, on, then the you're same, doing your job. You know, we're all yeah. on the same page. That's it. We're doing our job. Yeah. Trent Bolt then, and this news, may I say every pun intended, a bolt out of the blue. A couple of things with this. You know, I, I'm always pained when these things happen, when I hear, hear or read the cheesy press releases about this and that. And what got me yesterday, I suppose, was first and foremost, that he's going to be concentrating on domestic cricket. And I was thinking, how, how many games have you played in the last 10 years of domestic cricket? And even domestic cricket, when the Super Smash is on, the thing called the Big Bash is on, and you're probably going to be paying, playing that. Look, let's establish first and foremost, this guy is a one-two punch with Tim Southey, has been superb for New Zealand. What a servant, 11 years. I don't remember a day that... He hasn't given his all for New Zealand. He's a great, he, you know, in the field he's been brilliant. His hands are great. His, his, his bowling is so consistent. And anyone, and I know that you know, you think like this too, mate, that anyone that decides that, hey, I actually want to spend more time with those little ones in my house and doing that than anything else, I applaud you, mate. And the fact you're getting out now with a couple of years up your sleeve to earn some good cash, I don't mind. My only thing here, Dooley, is that I worry whether this is the first of many and I worry what it might potentially do to our test side and whether there are going to be other cricketers who establish themselves and do this. But that's just a paranoid thing that I'll get paranoid about. And it's not paranoid, Marty. I mean, I, I think it's the start of the start of what is going to come in the next five to ten years. And it may not seem, it may not be a, a, a procession of guys in the next six months or eight months or, or year or two years. But I think down the track that is going to be what's happening. And, and I have no issue with it whatsoever. Look, Trent Bolt, to me, comfortably number two on the all-time New Zealand bowling list. Wow. Comfortably behind, behind Sir Richard. Behind Sir Richard, I, yeah. I, I, He is exceptional. Absolutely exceptional. Um, you know, the, the, and because that is across all formats as well. I mean, that's the reason I've got him at number two because his white ball skills are brilliant as much as his test ball skills, his test um, cricket skills are as well. So, you know, T20, 50 over. And, and you, you think of games where he's been been unbelievably good in all three formats and it's something that very few bowlers around the world are able to do in the modern era you think about a stark that his go is is 20 over cricket 50 over cricket not so much test match cricket i mean the only other one i can think of is another great left armor at the moment and shaheen shah Freedy, who is absolutely brilliant jimmy anderson just plays test matches you know joffre archer really only played white ball can cricket. i throw so in boomer can i throw in boomer because i think that he actually crossed... yeah absolutely okay Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, we're talking quick bowlers. We're not talking spinners. So no, no, no. In the quick bowling ranks, those those two are one, two, and three across all three formats at the moment. So um, so that, that, let's get that out of the way. I have no issue with what Trent Bolt's done. I applaud it. I, I think he has served New Zealand cricket wonderfully well. Um, I don't think he'll go to the Big Bash, Marty. I, here's, my, here's my sort of take on the sure, whole thing. Sure. I think Trent Bolt will sign a very, very lucrative contract. And I'm, and I'm talking probably... I don't know. I'm going to say between the four and six million a year wow. mark to play for one franchise only, but in four different tournaments around the world. Now, I think he will also play some domestic cricket and, and 2020 cricket in New Zealand for, for the Northern Knights. I think that will, that will happen uh, and that will give him his time at home and the franchise cricket away from New Zealand will be for one franchise only. Now, whether Rajasthan are, are, are really cottoning onto this, and and because they've bought a franchise in uh, the UAE League or the or the um, the South African League, um, Mumbai have got a, a team now in all four leagues. They've got the buying one in the American League. They've got one in UAE. They've got one in South Africa. They've got one in the IPL. Um, they've got one in Rajasthan. have got one in the CPL. So so all these franchises are now picking up teams around the world. And I think what we will see is players starting to sign one franchise contract and playing in four to five different tournaments around the world. I think Trent Bolt will be on that track in the next four to six months. And, and his downtime will be 
and his family will be able to travel with him anywhere and everywhere because that's what these franchises do better than anyone else. They allow their families and the partners to go whenever and wherever they want. And he'll actually play a bit of cricket in New Zealand through that November, December time to get himself ready for the for the January tournament, which is which is going to be the UAE one. So so that that's my sort of take on it. And I, I think it'll probably be in the vicinity of, you know, four to six million a year. Wow. Fascinating. No one's brought that up yet. Uh, brilliant. I mean, it just makes so much sense. Finally, the DDP, Episode 4, Devlin Door Podcast, All Blacks and Joe Berg. All right, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Where do we go? Where, Where do we, we go, go, mate? Look, I mean, it, it, it's... I, 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 do you remember a guy called Rob Lowe? Yes. Who, who played sort of 19, 20 games for the All Blacks. Um, oh, sorry, for the, for the Spring Bucks. Yeah, L-U, um, I think it was lovely, L-U, lovely L-U-U-W, something like that. The spelling was different. L-O-U-W, wasn't it? L-O-U-W Robbie, L-O-U-W. Yeah, so I got it. to know Robbie very well through uh, through a bit of golf and, and played played a bit with him at the Dunhill Links a few years ago. And, and Rob and I have kept in touch ever since. And, um, you know, I messaged him before the game the other day and I said, listen, Robbie, I said, I think, uh, you know, I know, I know at times we've had some close battles. I think you guys are sort of seven to ten points comfortably better than us at the moment, and I expect that very result this weekend. So, you know, I look forward to your sort of thoughts on the match and blah, 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 blah. Um, and and it just sort of, I, I, you know, very rarely do we go into test matches thinking you know, we're not going to win. That's it. There we go. We can't win. No. And, and, and I feel like that right now. I, I don't feel we can win this weekend. Now, is that being complacent? Is it being... Defeatist. I, I, don't I don't know. know I think it's been realist. It. No, I, th- I think I think it's not even pessimistic, mate. I think it's realistic, is what it is. And, and why? And I look at it. And I think why is that? I, I don't know whether we have uh, any real. We don't have any game on attack. No, it, it seems very one-dimensional uh, to me at the moment. I'm, look, I mean, you know, we're, we're just getting bashed we're up. Lovers. We're getting we're bashed up, mate. Expert. That's right. We're getting uh, bashed we're, up, we're, mate. We're getting. We're getting bashed and beaten up. Yep. Um, I feel for Sam Kane. I think Sam Kane, you know, I, I look at Sam Kane, I think his best rugby years were when he was on the bench behind Richie McCall. McCall. Mm. You know, maybe, maybe that will, they were his best years of rugby. And it's a, it's a real shame. And I also think coming back from that neck injury has is, is, had to be an incredibly tough thing for him to do. Just to get back on the park yeah, was I agree. incredible. Mm. Oh, he's doing. Look, I, I like him, mate. I think he's got to be our captain at the moment. But yeah, I go into this thinking. Yeah. I mean, it'd be a miracle. I feel if we look at you know. To me, it's it's like you know a team coming down here from the northern hemisphere, and we always used to think in those June July tests we've got absolutely zero chance. That's kind of what I feel. I just feel mm. that the odds are so overwhelmingly in their favour. Yeah, and I mean, look with the amount of ball. I was also talking to a former All Black captain the other day, and 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 with the amount of ball South Africa had, I mean, they should have put twenty on yeah. us by. Sort of the fiftieth minute, should have the other day as well. They, they were they were unbelievable, and they were re- relentless. And I don't imagine there'll be any left this weekend. So, look, where do we go? What do we do? Is it time for a change? I mean, yeah, they all say the right things about Ian Foster, but um, you know, he's he, he's he's never won anything, and I think that's the biggest issue. And and are we seeing the hangover of of how good um, Graham Henry and Steve Hansen were? And maybe that's the case as well, because you know, guys who hung off their coattails. Uh, have proven to be not so good. 